Welcome back to JB Reviews. I found the 2023 Ford F350 Super Duty. This is gonna be a Lariat, and this one has the Sport Apparent Package. Special shout out to Larry H. Miller, Super Four Store here in Salt Lake City. Ken is actually one of the commercial guys here. He just sold this truck, and I think they did a great job specking it out. Now, if you would like to spec a truck like this one, here's the window sticker. This is the spec and colors. Iconic silver looks really good, by the way, with these wheels. And then this is a short listing of the standard equipment. And starting off the options is that high output power stroke for $12,495. Sport appearance is not that much money for $2,880. Fifth wheel prep package and a few other things down below here. Destination comes in at $1,895 for a total price of $84,270. Now the reason why you would get the sport appearance is to get those painted bumpers down below. And I must admit, I do like this iconic silver. I'm not a huge silver paint fan. But this truck looks really, really good with the paint. Now this does have the 360 camera, so you're gonna have a camera up front. Tow hooks. Now this one does not have the parking sensors, but you can get that on a Lariat for 2023. Full LED headlights with accent lights and turn signals are being LED as well. Fog lights down below here. And this blackout for the grill looks really good. It's all plastic, but it still looks good though. And then off to the side, they give you like this gunmetal gray with the black center cap here. I do like the overall styling of this. And this is a 20 inch wheel, LT, 275, 65, 20. And then here is the capacities, 3,750 pounds at 80 PSI, load range E, solid front axle, and then here's those wheel wheel liners that are optional. And then these platform running boards came apart of that sport appearance. And this is the badge for that high output power stroke too. They do the silver on the mirrors right there with the light up front. And then here's the back of the mirrors. Smart key system for the front doors. And this is just a better look at those running boards. I think I would prefer to have the power deployable ones personally. Color match for the door handles. And then here's the step, which is kind of controversial for 2023. But I actually don't mind because, hey, it's a truck. It's supposed to look a little rugged. And I think those steps kind of give it that look too. And then here's the sport badge out back. And then the wheel wheel liner in the rear, it looks like this. And because this is a one ton, you're gonna get those overload leaf springs and you're gonna get four leafs in the main pack. And out back, I thought that the 2020 rear end was really clean and they just made it just a little bit cleaner. Now, as far as the taillights go, there's a mix of LED bulbs and incandescent. And then you have that blind spot monitoring right there. There's also stuff built into the bumper out back, parking sensors, class five receiving hitch. And I forgot what rear end this had. Hold on one second. So yeah, that's gonna be a 331 regular. So it does not have the locker. I didn't think it did, so I didn't want to tell you guys wrong. But you can get a 355 with the locker and that's gonna increase your towing capacity. Four and seven pin connectors and light here for your conventional hitch and the backup camera. And then the step is built into the tailgate, which is nothing new. Now, one thing I have not seen yet was the backup sensors on the tailgate. So I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to get a platinum and up probably to see those types of features. But this one does have fifth wheel prep package, which has not been something I've seen a lot of on these trucks and spray and bed liner. These two things do hold up your build. So if you're building one for 2024, don't add this. And then this is a 12 pin for a camera and then seven pin for your trailer. Let's see if it's power going back up. Nope. Just gotta lift it up. And then check out the paint in the shade. 
I do like these wheels. I think they look better with some 35s. And then because it's a long bed, 48 gallon fuel tank, and then here's the DEF, that's 7.4 gallons. And let's go ahead and pop back up to the front and talk about this power stroke. Now, I've mentioned in the past that there's not a lot of differences between this and the standard output power stroke, but that's obviously not true. When you look under the hood, they look exactly the same. Now, obviously I'm pretty sure that they've increased the boost through the powertrain control module. Now, something that I have known is that they are using a water jacketed turbo. So that's gonna help, you know, probably with overall like performance with keeping it cool. Another thing is, I learned that they did improve the exhaust manifold so that it's gonna help you to breathe a little bit better and that the cylinder heads are freer flowing too as well. So add it all up, you went from 475 horsepower to 500, which is not a big jump and when you think about it, but 500 horsepower is insanity, you know, when you hear it. Now, the biggest jump came from the torque. So you went from 1,050 to 1,200. That is a big jump. That's 150 pound-feet of torque. And it's all going out of a 10-speed transmission, which is a 10R140. Now, one thing I have not gotten an answer on is whether or not they're still using the CP4.2. And even if they are, I know a lot of people have said that it's not a great fuel pump. And that's because the diesel standards here in America are not the same as in Europe. Europe's diesel is a lot better than ours, in other words. So if you are buying this truck, and if they do still use a CP4.2, just run diesel additive a few times a month just to keep that fuel system lubricated. Something with a high cetane number. I mean, they call it cetane booster, obviously. I use either Hotshot Secret or Diesel Clean, one of the two. And yeah, they don't pay me to say that, but I just recommend if you do have a truck with that CP4 like my Ram did, just make sure you keep that fuel system lubricated. That should help. I know a lot of people say that that's not why, but I know that that is part of the reasons why that fuel pump does fail. Now we won't spend too much time on the interior. I'll just show you guys the highlights. So here's some of the controls for lighting, the bed, and electronic parking brake, and power pedals down below seating controls on the side and look how wide and big these seats are too you have some brown piping perforated leather and you cannot tilt these headrests power steering column though being no sound system and i've mentioned this when i did a dually video these seats are pretty wide number one but number two they're very comfortable they're very soft and the ventilated seats work amazing. Push button starts right there. Let's go ahead and pop this on. Something else that was updated for 2023 was this gauge cluster. So now it's a full digital one like the F-150s. Let's go ahead and show you my favorite thing about this screen. Like this is something that Ram's been doing for a long time and I'm glad that Ford copied them because this right here will make me really excited about getting a Ford truck in the future. I love this. Like we've lived in our RV full time and having this at your fingertips is so needed. Especially when you're driving through a state where the temperature are 100 degrees. You want to know where the temperatures are when you're hooked up to a trailer versus what they are unloaded. That way you know how hot you're getting because you might need to pull over sometimes. I mean you don't want to you know put your truck through the ringer if you don't have to. So sometimes it might make more sense just to pull over and let it cool down some. Now here's some other gauges love this like turbo boost engine brake which they haven't had in the past exhaust filter i think they've had that in the past and then def level which also they've had and then they just give you a different style for the gauges too for battery and then that's your transmission and then exhaust brake and turbo charger now off to the side here this is going to be your 12 inch display and it does really complement the interior now the reason why I like this screen is for dual screen so if you want to listen to music and then have your navigation on that side that's nice you have your phone right there you have your trip one and then it shows you your average fuel economy off-road so if you it shows you your angles 
and then zone lighting. Now, I'm not sure if Ford does this, but it might be possible to see your tire pressure. I know on the Chevy side of the house you can, but at the very least, they let you see the bed camera, which is nice. Now, you might be able to keep that up too. You might be able to. A little bit of storage up here. I'm surprised they don't give you a power plug. That would be nice to have. And then here's some of your buttons for exhaust brake, cameras, caution lights, and traction control. Real quickly, here's the cameras. I always forget to show this to you when I do my reviews. So yeah, you can zoom in, and then you can zoom back out by pushing the magnifying glass there. Yeah, but this is really cool that they do that. And if you want that full screen for the bed, it's right here. What else? They have these camera views. Yeah, there's just a lot of different things you could see there. Below the screen, you have your driving modes. So it starts off with Eco, great animations, tow haul, normal. Slippery roads, and then of course you have one for off-road. Now if you hold the traction control button right here, let's see what happens. If you push it once, it just says traction control, but if you hold it, you get advanced track. So I don't have to hold it, I just want to show it to you there. Um, here's some of your audio controls if you don't want to use the screen. Climate control, love that they give you these hard buttons outside of the screen, so you have your heated steering wheel, heated seats, and ventilate it. Two USBs, you have a Type-C and a Type-A, 12 volt plug right there. And you don't have that locker as you guys can see on this one too. So I don't know why you wouldn't get that locker if you are ordering your truck. I don't know, I, I would definitely get that. But this is the center console for your six passenger setup. And then down below, and let's check out passenger side. They do have a storage up top here and then down below. Now I just saw this paper here. Your pickup is not recommended for carrying a sliding camper. So they do have a camper package that you can get with these trucks. And if you do want to carry a sliding camper for the bed, you better select it. Now if you're building a truck from the factory, you probably should just get it because it's not that much money. And I forgot to show you guys, but there it is. Auxiliary switches, area up here for sunshades, LED lights, and notice how the roof is that light color with the black interior. I've said this in the past. Just give it to me all black. Even if it's hotter, I'm okay with that. It just looks better. And there's a little bit of storage below the seat. And then this does drop so you guys can see your bottleneck jack there. cup holders, two USBs, and a 12 volt plug right there, and just lights on the roof. So let's go ahead and talk about the payload of this truck. This truck is not fully loaded because it doesn't have like the panoramic sunroof. That's like the only thing plus the center console that it doesn't have, but it does have fifth row prep package and spray in so that's going to take away from your payload right now as far as your numbers go you have a gross axle weight rating up front at 5600 pounds the rear is 7230 and a 12400 pound gvwr and then here are the wheels 20 by 8 and then here's your payload 4131 pounds that's a big payload that is a big payload because this truck has 20 inch wheels, running boards, and like I said, the bed is pretty much loaded. The only thing it doesn't have is just the panoramic sunroof, really. And that's probably like the only that would really lower the uh, payload capacity. But I hope you guys like the video. As I mentioned earlier, special shout out to Larry H. Miller, Super Ford here in Salt Lake City. Uh, this truck is sold, unfortunately, but if they do get trucks in, you can reach out to Ken and he can reach out to you guys and let you know if something does come available for you. See you guys in the next video.